Hi class, in lesson 5.6 we will be using graphs to represent equivalent ratios. Learning targets for today will be graphing a table of equivalent values, reading equivalent ratios from graphs, using graphs to determine equivalent ratios, and to compare different ratios. If we take a look at problem 1 on page 354, it says Stephanie is driving her car to college at a steady rate of 50 miles per hour. The table shows the ratio of time to distance. So go ahead and take a look at that table, and the first thing that I want you to do is look at the double number line that is listed below. It says the double number line shown represents the same data. What I would like you to do is fill in those missing intervals on the number line represented in time and the number line represented in distance. So here is what the double number line should look like if you fill in the missing intervals. If we look first at the time in hours, we can see that it is increasing by one hour. So we have five, six, and seven that we add. And then in the second double number line, uh, second part of the double number line, we see that the distance in miles is increasing by 50 miles. Underneath the double number line, it says that you can also represent equivalent ratios on a coordinate plane. So let's take a look at the graph. The first thing that I want to talk to you about quickly is how we should have our graphs labeled correctly. The very first thing that you need to make sure that you have is a title. You can see that the title for this graph is the distance driven by Stephanie. Uh, the second thing that we want to make sure that we have done then is our um, y or x axis it doesn't have to be in any particular order we want to make sure that our axes are labeled so if you look at the uh, x axis that is our horizontal line we see that we have the uh, time uh, one two three four five six seven eight hours and then we have it labeled as well right underneath it and then we look over at the other side of the graph the y axis and we need to make sure we have the same thing uh, we have 0 all the way up to 400 uh, going up by 50s just like it was on the double number line above and then we have it represented by the distance uh, in miles. So please make sure that your graphs are always labeled correctly. So do down at the bottom then it says to label the remaining ratios on the graph. So you have uh, 1 hour to 50 miles, you have 2 hours to 100 miles, uh, go ahead and finish up with everything that we did in the double number line above and put in uh, all of the remaining ratios on the graph. So here is what your graph should look like after you fill in the remaining ratios. Uh, 3 to 150 and 4 to 200 were already plotted for you. And then if you factor in the um, 3 that you added in to the double number line, 5 hours to 250 miles, 6 hours to 300 miles, and 7 hours to 350 miles. The down at the bottom of page 354 it tells us that you have used several different models and strategies now to determine equivalent ratios. You have scaled up and scaled down to determine equivalent ratios. You have also used tables and double number lines to determine equivalent ratios. So now let's investigate how you can use a graph to determine other equivalent ratios and see how all of the representations are connected. If we skip over to page 356 up at the top it says one way to analyze the relationship between equivalent ratios displayed on a graph is to draw a line to connect the points. You can also extend the line to make predictions of other equivalent ratios. Sometimes when you analyze a graph by drawing a line, all the points on the line make sense. Other times when you draw a line, all the points on the line do not make sense. So I want you to refer back to uh, the graph that you drew back on page 354. Take a look at number 3. It says, draw a line through all the points that you plotted on your graph. What do you notice? When you went back and drew a line through all the points on your graph, hopefully you were able to see that the points did indeed form a straight line. 
If we take a look at number four, do all the points on the line you drew make sense in this problem situation? Why or why not? So remember, take a look at our helper here in the word bubble. When we are comparing time and distance, do fractional values make sense? Remember, whenever we're graphing and we want to see if the line makes sense, we want to look at the fractional parts. So in this case, when we're dealing with time and distance, can you have a fractional part of time or can you have a fractional part of uh, a distance? So go ahead and answer number four with your groups. And yes, you can indeed have a fractional part of time. So the line that you did draw for the graph on page 354 does make sense in this problem situation. Let's finish up 5.6 by taking a look at problem number two, comparing ticket costs and ratios. It says the adult ticket price for admission into the Rollerville Amusement Park is $15. The table and graph show the number, excuse me, show the ratio number of adult ticket prices to the cost. So first we're going to take a look at the adult tickets and the cost for the adults. So you can see here in the table everything represented for that particular ratio. Uh, the number of adult tickets from 1 to 4 and then the cost uh, for each of those tickets. And then you can see the graph represented here. Again, look at our title admission prices, and then we have our x-axis and our y-axis uh, that is neatly labeled, so that is very easy to understand uh, and read the graph. Underneath the graph, then, at the bottom of page 357, it says that the Rollerville Amusement Park has different charges for students and preschool age children. Student tickets are $10.00 and preschool age children tickets are five dollars so go ahead and uh, complete each table for number one uh, the student tickets table is first and the preschool tickets table is second here is what your tables should look like for the student cost one ticket to ten dollars two to twenty three to thirty and four to forty uh, for the preschool uh, preschool tickets you should have one to five two to ten 3 to 15 and 4 to 20. Let's take a look at number 2 at the top of page 358. It says to plot each set of equivalent ratios on the previous graph. Use a triangle for the student tickets. So everything from this table here you're going to be plotting with a triangle on the graph above on page 357 and you're going to be using a square then for the preschool tickets uh, from all of the ratios from this table. So go ahead and plot each of those uh, on the graph on page 357. So here is what your graph should look like. It was very difficult to try to make squares and triangles so my red dots represent the squares and my green dots represent the triangles uh, for the student tickets and the preschool tickets. Uh, let's look at uh, number three. I want to leave the graph up here, so you're going to have to kind of page back and forth. Uh, number three says to draw three separate lines through the points that represent each ratio, and what do you notice? So go ahead and do number three uh, with your groups. When you draw a line through... Uh, each of the points that represent each ratio, you can see that each of them are indeed a straight line and there is a different steepness uh, to each of them as well. Uh, take a look at number four on page 358 then. It says, do all the points on the line you drew make sense in this problem situation and why or why not? So go ahead and answer number four. If you think about number four, uh, the lines that we did draw do not make sense in this problem situa situation because you cannot buy a fractional part of a ticket. Let's look at number five then. How can you tell by looking at the three lines which rate cost to ticket is the highest? So take a look back at your graph, look at the lines that were formed, 
and see if you can tell by looking at those lines which rate cost a ticket is the highest. By looking at the lines, you can see that the steepest one, uh, which in this case is the adult one, uh, sh that steepest line shows the highest cost for a ticket. If we take a look at number six then, it says how can you tell by looking at the three lines which rate cost to ticket is the lowest. Go ahead and answer that with your groups. And if we look at the flattest line, which would be the preschool uh, students, the preschool children, we can see that the flattest line would show the lowest cost for the tickets for number six. So that's how we can use a graph uh, to not only determine other equivalent ratios, but how we can kind of take a look and see how all of the representations uh, are indeed connected. Uh, that's going to be it for Lesson 5.6. Uh, on using graphs to represent equivalent ratios. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.